Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this series of lectures, we are discussing about different aspects of cell signaling pathway. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about one crucial kind of cell signaling pathway that is known as receptor tyrosine kinase pathway. Okay, so I'll be stating you what is receptor tyrosine kinase pathway, what are the components of receptor tyrosine kinase pathway, what is the signaling molecule of RTK pathway, and basically the RTK pathway can lead to either PI3K AKTM TOR pathway or it can go via MAP kinase pathway. So we'll be discussing about PI3K AKT mTOR pathway as well as MAP kinase pathway both in this particular lecture. Okay. All right. So now we'll begin with the RTK pathway. And if you followed my earlier lecture on this cell cycle, uh, I mean, all this cell signaling series, you'll know one thing that we are going to discuss about the RTK pathway as per the format that we always discuss the cell signaling. Remember, every single cell signaling pathway is either helping the cell to grow, divide, or causing the cell to die. This particular pathway, RTK pathway, allows the cell to grow only, don't die. Okay, so RTK pathway is linked with cell growth. Although it has a crosstalk between the cell death pathway, but it's a separate deal. Mostly this pathway is always linked to the cell growth, cell division, cellular proliferation. Okay, so the RTK pathway is the biggest reason that this is the cell growth. Ke liye kiya jata hai. Next thing that you need to understand about any cell signaling pathway is the signaling molecule, means the ligand and the receptor. Ligand and receptor. So in this RTK pathway, what is acting as a ligand? What is acting as a receptor? So the receptor is receptor tyrosine kinase or RTK. Tyrosine kinase receptor. Now what is this tyrosine kinase receptor? Basically tyrosine kinase receptor is a family of mem transmembrane protein which transpass the membrane and they have generally they get activated when they are dimerized. So the activation of RTK is done when they are dimerized. So in this case, what we know is that they have single unit like this, but whenever they dimerized with the signaling molecule in the center, then this RTKs get phosphorylated. This phosphorylate, phosphorylation activates the RTK and then the further process will continue. That's how the RTK works. Okay. And it has tyrosine rich residue and it has a kinase activity. Tyrosine amino acid is present in the cytosolic side of this receptor and this enzyme has a kinase activity. That's why we call it receptor tyrosine kinase. Similarly, there are other receptors in the cell. Receptor histidine kinase is also there, but that's a different deal. Here, this is the receptor. Now, what is the ligand for this pathway? Generally, growth factor. Growth factors act as a ligand for tyrosine kinase pathway. So, first part is clear, nature of the pathway helps the cell to grow and ligand receptor, it's clear. Now, the second important thing that we need to understand is the function. What is the function of this pathway? I already told you, helps the cell to grow, divide, proliferate. Okay, so linked with the growth of the cell. Second important information is clear. Now we have two things. Third is the process or mechanism, how it's done, how this pathway works. And fourth thing that we need to understand is desensitization. So there was a technical issue, so I need to delete uh, the existing uh, writing in the slide. So basically what we understood here uh, that we have talked about the receptor, signaling molecule and receptor. We have also talked about the function, the third thing is a process and the fourth thing is the desensitization. Okay, so now we will be working on the desensitization and process. We have talked about the signal and ligand, signaling molecule and receptor and we have also talked about the function. So what is the exact process of RTK pathway and what is the desensitization? So the process of RTK pathway can be divided into two different types. One is known as PI3K AKT 
mTOR pathway and the other one here is known as MAP kinase pathway. PI3KKT mTOR pathway or MAP kinase pathway. These are the two types of pathway that we will be dealing with now to understand with receptor tyrosine kinase. Okay, so now we will move to the next slide where we will discuss about these two separate pathways both are connected via the receptor tyrosine kinase. So let's begin and move on to the next slide. So we have this RTK and we have this signaling molecule. What is the signaling molecule? Let's say the growth hormone acting as a signaling molecule as a ligand. Ligand receptor binding is very important and it will be done. But before going into the two separate pathways of RTK, I want you to understand how exactly RTK functions, how receptor tyrosine kinase functions. So I told you earlier that this is a cell membrane and receptor tyrosine kinase generally present as subunits in the membrane. The subunits are not active. The subunit can be activated when a single ligand will bring both the subunit in close proximity and dimerization would be done. So afterwards what happened is this dimerization while the ligands bind to it. The ligand binds to it and as a result of which dimerization take place and in dimerization means what? Basically both the subunit will be connected together by one single ligand which is in this case growth hormone. Upon binding what happens? Three different stages. First is the dimerization formation of dimer. Then second step onwards take place inside of the cytosol. Okay. So the first ligand binding to the receptor is extracellular outside of the cytosol. But the later stages take place in inside of the cytosol. The second step is the activation of the cytosolic kinase domain. Activation of kinase domain. Once the kinase domain is activated, then the third step takes place, cross phosphorylation. Means this particular subunit phosphorylate, the left subunit phosphorylate, right one, the right one phosphorylates, left one. This is known as auto cross phosphorylation. Left one phosphorylating right, right one phosphorylating left. So criss cross or right, cross phosphorylation. और क्रॉस फास्फोराइलेशन ऑटो क्यों क्योंकि सेल्फ फास्फोराइलेशन हो रहा है खुद को खुद ही फास्फोराइलेट कर रहा है तो दिस इज अ ऑटो सेल्फ फास्फोराइलेशन ऑटो सेल्फ फास्फोराइलेशन इज डन हियर आफ्टर ऑटो सेल्फ फास्फोराइलेशन इज डन देन इट बिकम्स एक्टिव नाउ द रिसेप्टर टायरोसिन काइनेस इज एक्टिव आरटीके इज एक्टिव दिस इज इनएक्टिव इनएक्टिव आरटीके दिस इज एक्टिव आरटीके once the RTK or receptor tyrosine kinase gets activated, then it will trigger either of the two pathways, PI3KKT mTOR pathway or MAP kinase pathway. Let's move on to the next slide to discuss about how this process is done. So again, RTK, now I'll write RTK as active RTK, activated form of RTK. So active RTK will now involve in both the types of pathways. The first pathway is that the activated form of RTK will interact to what? A PI3, I mean basically the RTK adapter molecule. So what is adapter molecule? Because imagine one thing that this is the membrane, this is dimerized form and phosphate groups are added. Okay. Phosphate groups are added. So this is the active form of RTK. But there are activator protein inside the cytosol. Activator proteins क्या करते हैं? Activator proteins का role है, वो further कुछ protein को phosphorylate करेगा downstream और वो जाके transcription factor को activate करेगा. That's the process of cell signal transduction. But here this, let's say this is RAS is that kind of protein. PI3 kinase is that kind of protein. But these proteins are not activated. In order to activate this protein, they need to have some adapter molecules. What is the job of this adapter molecule? It is basically to connect this activated form of receptor to this activator protein like RAS or like PI3K. One such example, I'll change the color here. 
I'll be using a black one to explain this pathway. So basically, GRB2, GRB2 is such kind of adapter molecule which connects the activated phosphorylated cytosolic domain, mouthful of words, to the RAS, and that will activate RAS. Okay, once RAS is active, once RAS is active. Because RAS gets activated once it's associated to GTP. GTP associates as RAS is activated. Once RAS is active, then RAS will further activate other kinases or other proteins in the downstream. So think about it. So via adapter, adapter protein is there, and after adapter protein, through adapter protein, let's say RAS is activated. This activated RAS will further phosphorylate and activate RAF. RAF activates make make activates arc. Should write everything in capital letters here. RAS RAF make arc. Okay. R R M E. So remember Rami. Ra ra m e, ram. That's how you can easily remember. Ras, raf, make arc. Rami. Okay. And once arc is activated, then further this arc is going to go inside the nucleus and activate other transcription factors like jun, phos. And they will further bring the re result that is cell. Growth and division. This is the job. That's how simple the pathway looks like. And this pathway has another name. Why? Because basically, this arc that is activated at the end is also known as MAP kinase. MAP K. Make is known as MAP kinase kinase. RAF is known as Map kinase kinase kinase. Why three kinases? Because it further phosphorylates two underneath. Why two? Because phosphorylates one underneath, and this one phosphorylates the transcription factor jun or phos. So this is the idea. So RAS activates map kinase kinase kinase. Map kinase 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 activates map kinase kinase. Map kinase kinase activates map kinase, and map kinase further activate jun and phos. Jun phos ultimately after activation will go inside the nucleus and. Cause a particular gene to be transcribed. That's how easy it is. That is the side of. That is the side of map kinase pathway. Okay, you can take the screenshot of map kinase pathway. Here is a simplistic drawing of map kinase pathway. On the other hand, the RTK once activated via the adapter, there might be different kinds of adapters in different proteins activation, but further activates. I'll take a different color for the right hand side to to give you a contrast. Taking red, it activates PI three K PI three kinase. Activates PI three K. PI three K activates AKT. AKT activates MTOR. You know you can think of uh, the full form of all this. You can search and easily get it. But actually, they are much. Known and renowned by their short forms because it's very difficult to even remember the full form is not required. Pi three K AKT mTOR and further this mTOR is going to activate some transcription factors that ultimately leads to the result that is the cell growth, proliferation, cell differentiation, division, all these things. So this right hand side pathway is known as Pi three K AKT mTOR pathway. Left hand side pathway is known as MAP kinase pathway. And the center. Both pathways are connected by the RTK receptor tyrosine kinase and how it behaves based on the receptor tyrosine kinase. That's how easy it is. That's how the pathway works. The whole pathway works. So this is the process of the pathway. And remember, basically, this pathway leads to the production of certain proteins required for cell growth and division, like cyclin CDKs, for example. On the other hand, the last thing that is uh, there that is remaining. Is to talk about the desensitization. You can take a screenshot now. I uh, give you this time to take a screenshot. So, 
I have to explain it here. The desensitization, I'll take a different color though. Desensitization, the fourth important part of the signaling, desensitization. How the desensitization is done? Step one, the major way to desensitize receptor tyrosine kinase pathway is to inactivate inactivate RAS. RAS gets inactivated when RAS GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. The moment GTP gets hydrolyzed to GDP, the RAS is inactive. And once the RAS is inactive, there is no way the whole pathway of MAP kinase can continue. For, for MAP kinase pathway, RAS inactivation works as a desensitization. Second step that can desensitize this pathway is phospho, I mean, uh, phosphatase enzymes. Phosphatase enzymes are involved. Specific phosphatase enzymes that will actually cut and cleave the phosphate groups out from the intermediates of the cell signaling pathway. So the example here is known as SHP1, SHP2. These are the type of phosphatases that are used. SHP1, SHP2. That cuts the phosphate group out from all these different, like PITK, KTM, TOR, all these path, uh, intermediates. They can cut the phosphate groups out. In that way, desensitization can be done. The pathway can be switched off. And the third and final one is again internalization and degradation of RTK. If RTK is cell surface, mein nahi rahega, to automatically cell signaling will not happen because signal, signaling ligand will not bind with anyone. So what do we do with RTK? Ko Basically what we do for the RTK receptor tyrosine kinase, imagine that this is the membrane, this is RTK. Basically, It is engulfed inside the cell, internalized inside the cell as an endosome and then it is degraded. In that way, we can desensitize the pathway RTK. Why it is important to desensitize and stop and prevent receptor tyrosine kinase pathway? Because this pathway leads to the growth, proliferation, division of the cell. So excessive growth, proliferation and division can lead to formation of tumor. And that tumor can be cancerous if it is transformed. So to prevent that, Desensitization is always required, it's always done. Okay, so that's overall idea about the receptor tyrosine kinase pathway or RTK pathway. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And we are concluding our lecture, we are concluding our understanding of cell signaling pathway with the help of this particular lecture. I wish you got benefit from these lectures. If you like this lecture, please share this lecture with your friends. And also, watch all the different lectures of cell signaling to get a clear idea. So that's all about it. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.